What's up guys, Mr. Wrestling Fanatic back here with another video and it's been about a week, maybe a week and a half, can't remember, sorry, I, I just got busy and then I got sick and then there was a medical issue I had to deal with, I'm fine though, I'm better, we're back here and I, the random thoughts video that I did a week or two ago, I, I like doing that, so what I'm going to do now is like, a random thoughts video every week for the week of wrestling. And there is a lot to talk about this week. The review wise involving NXT UK, NXT, WWE Raw and SmackDown, 205 Live even. There's stuff to talk about for AEW. There's stuff to talk about for New Japan. So let's get into it. <coughs> Still going to cough a little bit. Sorry if you hear that throughout the video. Uh, Monday Night Raw. All right, show you know the King of Ring tournament started out, which I, I'm a big fan of, big fan of the King of Ring tournament, and I'm happy that it's back because we had some good matches. Samojo and Cesaro was a very very good quality match for television. Loved it. Um, Zayn and Cedric went didn't go very long, and Zayn looked like trash. Like I'm very upset with how they're using Sami Zayn. Completely, and then a surprising thing happened later tonight. It was the OC of the Alves and Anderson versus Strowman and Rollins for the tag team titles, and Strowman and Rollins won. So Rollins is a double champion. Strowman is has his second Raw tag team title reign, his second total reign in WWE entirely. And not a big Strowman fan, but yeah, I'm happy for him. Happy he's getting some reign. Um, I definitely think they're gonna lose the belt soon, and Strowman's gonna turn heel and challenge Rollins at Clash of Champions for the title. It only makes sense. On um, SmackDown, more King of the Ring stuff. You had Elias and Kevin Owens and Apollo Crews and Andrade. Andrade, good match with Crews. Won the match. Andrade did. Um, Elias and Owens main evented in a solid match, but, man, Kevin Owens cost out of the tournament by Shane McMahon, of course. I'm just, I'm completely sick of Shane McMahon. Um... Some other interesting stuff that happened on SmackDown was, of course, the whole reveal of Roman Reigns' attacker. But before that, we had Buddy Murphy and Daniel Bryan in a great match. Absolutely great match. I liked it better than the Roman Reigns match the week prior. Great stuff from those two. Happy Buddy won. Then later tonight, we saw the man who attacked, quote-unquote, Roman Reigns... And it was literally a Eric Rowan look-alike. It, it was a bald dude, big bald dude with a red beard. So this is just clearly prolonging the story. Which I can see, but like... It's gonna drag out a little too far, in my opinion. So yeah, my thoughts on Raw and SmackDown were... Thumbs... Slightly over the middle. Because there was some good stuff, but there was also stuff that needs to be improved on both shows. Like, I feel like Raw would just succeed so much better if it was only two hours. Like, just that extra third hour of Raw is just all pointless segments, in my opinion. After SmackDown, we saw 205 Live. 205 Live had a traditional Survivor Series elimination match basically on their show it was a one match show the, sh the match went about 45 minutes it was great very very good match it was team Oni Lorcan versus team Drew Gulak um, on one side it was Lorcan <coughs> excuse me Gallagher Humberto Carrillo Isaiah Swerve Scott Damn, I can't remember the last guy who was on Team Lorkin. I don't know why. Akira Tozawa. And then there was Team Gulak, which is, of course, Gulak, Tony Nese, um, Hector Garza, Hector Garza, Angel Garza, my bad. Um, God damn it. I don't know why it's so hard to remember who, who's on what team. Wow, I'm just having a massive, massive brain fart right now. 
Mike Canellis, and oh, Aria Davari. Jesus. Um, very, very fun match. Uh, I love that Angel Garza lasted until the final member on his team. Made him look really good, made him look really strong. Because that guy, he has so much talent and charisma. And so does his cousin Carrillo. I love to see a one on one feud between them, possibly for the Cruiserweight title. Because honestly, I can see Carrillo being one of those guys who can take the belt off of Gulak. You know, I do think it's going to be Chad Gable. But yeah, that was that was a really, really good match. Love the match. I gave it four and a quarter stars, if you're interested in the rating. It did drag a little bit, but you know, it's going to happen. I, I, I'd even maybe bump it to four and a half. I, I rated the Buddy Murphy-Daniel Bryan match for, at four stars, and the Joe and Cesaro match at three and a half. Those are the best match from each show of the week. I'm going to try to do that for NXT and NXT UK as well. Even though those are more segment heavy this week, you could say. Until the main event of NXT. But yeah, 205 Live, really good show. Um, and we learned a couple matches for next week. We're going to get Brian Kendrick versus Jet Gallagher, which should be really good. Brian Kendrick's awesome. And we're also going to get Kalisto versus Arya Davari. I'm not huge on Arya Davari, so I'm going to be... I'm very interested to see what he can do against Kalisto, because Kalisto is a very good worker. Yeah, that was 205. Really good show. Thumbs up there. Um, and then we have NXT on Wednesday. Uh, the Undisputed Era come out, cut their promo about how it's still their destiny to hold all the gold. Um, O'Reilly and Fish show that Fish did tag O'Reilly, had the tag rope, and there was a rematch announced for next NXT which would be Fish and O'Reilly versus the Street Profits for the NXT Tag Team titles. I already know the results of that match. I'm not going to spoil it in case people watch this and don't know. I already know what happens to that match. That's next week. Um, and Jordan Miles came out, and he challenged Adam Cole. He won the breakout tournament, and he said, Cole, I want you. So it will be Jordan Miles and Adam Cole in two weeks on NXT TV. Um, also, on next to you, Mia Yim faced um, Vanessa Bourne. It was a, it wasn't it was a throwaway match, but after the match, Shayna Baszler came out with Duke and Safir, however you say her name, and basically offered Mia Yim to join them and be a stable because she was impressed with how tough Mia Yim is. Of course, Yim denied it, and they attacked her. And no one made the save. I, I was, the, a bunch of referees came out and broke it up. <clears throat> and also, we heard that it will be Keith Lee versus. I still don't know how to say his name, his new name. I'm, I'm going to try to remember what it is, but I'm just, if I don't, I shouldn't call him what his Ring of Honor and independent name was. Keith Lee versus Dominique. Divakojic Donovan Dijak <laughs> sorry I butcher that every time that's going to be awesome they have some awesome matches around the independent scene they had a really good match in XT a while back so yeah I'm really excited about that so we have two really good matches next week on XT Lee and Dominic and Profits versus Era. And then the main event was Matt Riddle and Killian Dane, which was a great, hard-hitting brawl, in my opinion. <coughs> I gave this one three and a half. I like that Dane won. I really do. It makes him look like a monster. Which he is. So I'm really happy about that. I have a feeling that at TakeOver War Games in November, we're going to get Imperium. I said this in my last Random Thoughts video. We're going to get Imperium of Walter, either Eichner or Bartel, one of those two, Alexander Wolf, and Killian Dane. So a little bit of a Sandy reuni reuniting there, along with Walter and one of the other two. And they're going to face British Song Style and Matt Riddle in War Games. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I think it should happen, too, because... We could get Cole versus whoever, Roderick Strong versus Dream, 
and probably Profits versus O'Reilly Fish again. And the woman's title, too. Which will probably be Shayna and Rhea Ripley. Uh, that's kind of a spoiler, because... Alright, yeah, uh, I found the NXT taping spoilers. Rip, Rhea Ripley does come out and challenge Shayna Baszler. That's going to happen in a couple weeks. So yeah, that war game sounds awesome. <laughs> I hope that's what they go with, too. And we're not done with NXT yet because it has been announced that starting September 18th, NXT will be moved to two hours and will now be live every week on the USA Network. I, I, I don't know how to feel about this because this could mean that Vince is taking more control, but it was also announced that Vince wasn't involved at all this week with Raw or SmackDown. And since the XFL is starting to heat up and start up officially, because <clears throat> literally it starts in February, so we have to do all the preparation and stuff for it. He's taking a little bit of time off. A little bit of time off. Not a lot. He's still going to be there, but not as involved, probably, of WWE stuff to work on the XFL. <coughs> so, yeah. And also, for those people who can't watch NXT Live, or for people who want to watch AEW when it comes on weekly... In October, the same night and probably the same time that NXT comes on, on USA Network, NXT will be replayed on the network every Thursday. The, the episode from the night before will be replayed on the network. So here, I'm probably going to watch AEW Live and replay it on the network, NXT on the network the next day, because I don't have a DVR to DVR AEW. <clears throat> And actually, no, we still got to talk about NXT UK. So yeah, Cardiff is next Saturday, along with All Out. And a, a solid episode of NXT UK, you know. We're learning that we're going to get uh, Travis Banks and Noam Dar at Cardiff, which should be great. Uh, we will also next week see Kenny Williams versus Jordan Devlin on the Go Home Edition. Should be a good match. Uh, tonight we did... S that, uh, not tonight. But we did see Kaylee Ray face, I forgot her name, but she won. And she cut a very personal promo on Tony Storm. I'm really excited for that match. That's going to be a really good women's match. Oh, uh, what opened the show? Damn. There was, there was another match. I don't remember. Sorry. But, but the last match that was on the show... Oh, wait, no. Because it was Eichner and Bartel of Imperium versus a team. Which I can't think of who it was. Damn. <laughs> oh, it's no, Primate and the Wild Boar, I think his name is. The Imperium won, and then they went to the back, and they were attacked by somebody. We don't know who. We find out who, though. We'll talk about that after. And there's the Kaylee Ray stuff. And there was... Mark Andrews versus James Drake. Solid little match here. I gave this one three and a quarter stars. Best match of the night. And Mark Andrews won. So now we'll have Andrews and Morgan Webster versus Grizzly Young Veterans, who are the champions, versus Gallus of Mark Coffey and Wolfgang. For tag team titles. We'll see who wins that one. I hope Grizzly Young Veterans retain, though. So I'm big fans of both of them. <clears throat> and then we did end up finding out who attacked because Trent Seven came out and I just assumed it was him Trent Seven came out the crowd and Walter came out all pissed off <coughs> with Alexander Wolf behind him because they're the only two members of Imperium who were like 100% of the time after uh, Eichner and Hartow get attacked and Tyler Bate attacks Walt uh, Wolf with a chair on the stage, and then they corner Walter. Bate gets the best of Walter, and he hits the Tyler Driver on him. Now, I recently watched their match from Progress Wrestling. I believe it was Chapter 76, Hello Wembley. It was live in Wembley Stadium. That was a fantastic match. I gave that match five stars. So I cannot wait for their match next Saturday. That match is going to be excellent. <clears throat> the NXT UK is going to be fun. You know, I'm really excited to get into it more. And now we can talk about some AEW stuff real quick. So breaking news. 
Nothing's really changed in the All Out card. Except there was Private Party versus and Halico and Jack Evans announced for the buy-in. <coughs> but John Moxley, I, I had to pull out of the match from Omega because he has a bacterial infection in his elbow. I forgot, it's like MRSA or something like that. It's something where he, it's, it's a little serious, you know. It really can be serious, so we want to be cautious with it. And then literally 25 minutes later, they announced that Pac will be replacing Moxley and will face Omega. Now you do have a story here because Pac did pull out a double or nothing because he was the he was currently the Dragon Gates World Champion and he didn't want to lose to Hangman Page and he, he it's not that he didn't want to lose to him. He didn't want to lose when he was the champion of Dragon Gate because he didn't want to downgrade that title's pres prestige, which I completely understand. I'm sure if he wasn't the champion, he would have been fine. Hey, yeah, I'll take the loss, whatever. We got so much time to build me up in AEW. They, they were, this is literally our first show. And you can have Omega just talk crap about that. Be like, yeah, you pulled out. You just say, like, yeah, you're... You're a wuss or whatever. You're like you're soft for pulling out of the match with Hangman, and yeah, all that. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, like just to get some heat between them, because there's really no actual build up. Because Pac also did pull out a fire fest in a match with Omega. It was going to be Pac and the Lucha Brothers versus Omega and the Bucks. Pac put out of that. Laredo Kid had to step in. So Omega can also bring that up. That Pac's just been ducking AEW, and now he actually is finally wrestling, and he's going to lose. And then you could have them go at it. You know? I think that match is going to be excellent. I think that match is going to be better than the John Moxley match, match quality-wise. But in all honesty, I think John Moxley was going to beat Omega. I don't know if Pac will beat Omega, though. We'll have to wait and see. So that's basically the all-out news. And then the New Japan news is the Super J Cup is happening. I think today or tomorrow is the last day. Luckily, I haven't gotten any spoilers because New Japan World isn't streaming it until September, <clears throat> which sucks. But I heard Will Ospreay and Amazing Red did have a fantastic match, so I'm super excited for that. So Super J Cup will be review will be coming soon, hopefully. <coughs> hopefully I can find a stream of it somewhere because it was on Fight TV. You could buy it on Fight TV. I just wasn't buying it. So hopefully since it was on Fight TV, someone got got file of it and uploads it somewhere, and I can download it real quick before it gets taken down. <laughs> Even though I'll see it for a New Japan World in a little bit, it's just that I want to watch it now because I just feel like spoilers are going to come out easily. Same thing with Crown, uh, I think it's called Crown Royale, or whatever. It's New Japan show next week, also on Saturday, literally the same time Cardiff is happening, and that card looks awesome. Kenta and Ishii, Suzuki and Okada, Tanahashi and Sabre Jr. Gonna be a great card. Gonna be a great night. But yeah, that was, uh, this week's Random Thoughts in Wrestling. Uh, stay tuned, uh, soon. Uh, I'll think of another video to come up with. we got a lot of content for next week. we got a couple reviews to put up, a couple predictions. So, yeah, we'll come up with that. But, yeah, that was my uh, random thoughts of the week. And hope you guys enjoyed and have a good night.